Okay, hello everyone. Uh, this is Brett here. We're going to get started here in just a moment and turn on the camera here. So I'll give you guys a quick wave. Hopefully that worked. If you can see and hear me okay, please let me know and I will dive right into everything. So let's just see how everybody that's here live. We've got Lisa, Alex, Tori, Private uh, Jay, Tori is here twice. Private Jay, yeah, Rick, Sam. Okay, excellent. All right, everybody. Well, let's unpack what's going on in the markets here today. I pulled up some news, but wanted to do that together to see uh, what's uh, freshest and what's on the news wires. So, of course, before we dive all into all that, CPI data came in a little bit, right where we, it was priced in, 4%. So, not a lot happened. Saw a little bit of a pump in the markets earlier on from the uh, XRP news, which was really not really anything important. It was kind of non-news. So we saw a little spike. But really, I think everything's waiting for the FOMC. And what's being priced in to the FOMC is the that they will not raise this month, but they might raise in July. So, you know, we're just kind of waiting for that pattern to play out. So why don't we take a look at what the news has to say here. So we've got some... Um, here, Bitcoin price rejects CPI's boost as a market Fed rate pause. It's an odd, clunky headline. Let's just see what else that we can find. But as we always look at the charts, it usually tells us what the news is. We've been talking about this already. This 25,500 level, technically 25,300 is still holding. So I'll just jump on over to that briefly and uh, on a daily chart. So... Couple things here are connecting our paper trading account. And let's see, I got to get to the right list here. Uh, Crypto Mastery is the list we're going to be working with today and Bitcoin. So here we have Bitcoin price not doing a whole lot here. Now, this chart doesn't have a lot of drawings on there. Let's do that together. We've got 25,300, which we've been talking about here. Why is that important? That was the uh, market cycle high back here, which rejected back in August of 2022. And uh, so we rejected here and here finally broke above. Needed to hold here for us to have any hopes of going higher. And uh, But this overall pattern here, if we look at it on a weekly basis, uh, we are seeing a bit of a, a head and shoulders on a macro basis here. So that's the problem here. And actually, I'm, I'm not going to use the squiggly lines because they're I like these uh, this indicator better. So let's do that. And then we'll get back to the news. But this is really what we need to be worried about is if we start to lose this level here. We also have the 21 and 50 week moving averages technically uh, on top of those, those are exponential moving averages. If we were to put on the 100 week regular, it's coming right in through here. And uh, the 200 week is also significant. So we can layer that on. But really, this is an important level for all these reasons. And the 21 days is, is curving over on the 51 day EMA. So that's troubling here. Uh, I would like to see, you know, it, we, probably what we'll see is a bit of a bounce here. And uh, that's what we want to look at. So this head and shoulders could be skewed a bit. If we were to just draw this thing out and pontificate a bit, that could be the shoulder line and this could be the right head. So we have this 25,300 level. You know, I think it's it's certainly reasonable that we'd see this push up over here through most of you know, June and July. This is a broader cycle, though. This right shoulder, if we were to draw it this way, puts us all the way out even to September and uh, early September, where it would either break down below there. We'll look at some price targets if that happens. Or the question is, are we in an uptrending uh, trade channel? So we've looked at this in our uh, M3 class, which uh, we'll unpack. We do this uh, deeper dive on all this, obviously in the M3 Active Trader class tomorrow. So if you're not a member of that, you can learn more about that uh, since this is going on the YouTubes. Most of you are, but we're trying to get more members in there. So that is at moonstream.io M3. We have a couple of spots left, but uh, it's a small group that we do deep dives into more of this, and that's on Wednesdays. All right, moving right along, though, let's unpack some more of the news and go back to what's going on in the overall markets first, just to see Bitcoin's gone back to neutral. I think uh, we don't see much fireworks today until after the FOMC and more importantly, the languaging that Powell uses based on what he feels is going to be necessary going forward. What we don't want to see also, we don't want to see them lower rates because generally we see the markets pull back. That means they've broken the economy and typically there's a, a correction after that. So what we want to hear is they're going to leave things alone 
No more rate hikes for the rest of the year, but uh, we're not clear that's going to happen. So let's turn off here the the grays. I, I think they do raise one more time, and um, but could be proven wrong. We'll see. So just turned off all the non-moving coins. We have Ethereum down here. We'll check that out. And not a whole lot on the upside. We can turn off all of these and just look at greens. But the highest winner today is BNB, which is uh, oddly up 2%, strangely because of the you know, with Binance under the crosshairs of the SEC, that surprises me. But uh, for you perma bulls here, what's uh, looking good? Nothing's really looking good enough, but we do have some green here. Phantom coin, Tezos. I will say this, that it is not a bad time, uh, which is not the same as saying it's a good time. It's not a bad time to start dollar cost averaging into some of the longer term altcoins that are down 90 to 95 percent. Because we are in the lows of, not saying the low, we could come down and retest that $16,000 level. I don't think we go below that. I think the bottom is in. But um, these are the times to start dollar cost averaging into small positions and uh, gradually growing positions in some of your favorite altcoins. And we'll look at some of the ways you can evaluate those today, mostly looking at from where we are now, if there is a support level on an altcoin how high on a percentage basis can it go back to old all-time highs? And some of these are looking very good for 10x uh, gains and sometimes higher back to uh, their previous all-time highs. Sometimes some of these are 50x, 85x. There's a few of them that are looking pretty good. And those are the ones I would advise to consider start dollar cost averaging. And then if it does go lower, you can add to it at support and bounce levels. And certainly using our indicators the uh, crypto mastery indicators. That's why we're here really to talk about how to best interpret these. And so if we want to look at this on the weekly basis, still bearish, you know, we, we've been saying for weeks now that once our trend strength indicator turned from green to red and broke below 80, decidedly bearish. And uh, so we've been coming down ever since. So what we'd like to see before going long is an oversold trend strength indicator and turning up above 20. And certainly our uh, other one that we look at is the ERI, the early reversal indicator. So it called correctly here was a time to uh, be getting out of Bitcoin and lightning positions. And correspondingly, we are looking for the next green arrow and correspond with these here, the TSI signal and our trend indicator. Now, this is the weekly basis. So just overall, giving you the what we would expect here. If we do push higher, we could come back up just into this 28.2 range. And then I would expect it to roll over. But really this area here is gonna be critical at this point. And the reason for that is if we draw a line all the way out here like this, you know, this is where it's an art and a science. And you could say, well, Brett, uh, this other guy drew it this way. And technically in the book, yeah, I, okay, fine. But here's how I'm going to draw it. And uh, I've been uh, pretty good at this here and doing a long time. So, you know, look, this is why I'm saying, though, it is really a zone of, you know, art and a science. So around 28, 2000, why? Because if we draw this as a trend line, let me just do this here. I'm careful not to sort of draw lines and sand where I think they should go or want to prove a point. but really where they do line up. Now, this is giving me some trouble here. I'm going to grab it again. And right uh, right in this level, where was it? Right in there. Now, why is that level? Well, two reasons. One, it was a support zone right back in here. If we go farther out, also, uh, let me turn off this ERI. Don't want to go too fast for you guys, but I don't want to be too slow. So you guys are staying caught up. But this level back in here, you know, um, I'm zooming out, when in doubt, zoom out. I think I would raise it a bit right in this zone, actually. Strong support on a weekly basis uh, for this period back in May of 2021, May and all the way through, see, this is weekly, so we're into July. So it's been several weeks here at this level, bouncing off and uh, acting as support at this 20, call it $29,000 level. Came down here, held his support briefly, broke down, and then has been acting as some resistance. Zoom out a bit uh, up in here. We saw this sort of fake out, this up thrust uh, after, if you're following the Wyckoff patterns, this almost could be seen as an up thrust after some distribution, immediately fell back down below. So this is a key level here. 
But the other reason that I think we're going to want to watch this is for that right shoulder. Okay, so uh, if we push up higher, I would expect some pullback. But the, then the big question becomes, does it roll over and break right here at 28.4? in which case looking more like the downside head and shoulders, or do we start to turn higher? We've seen these trend channels really holding up nicely over time and really the best thing to be doing and looking for are these new trend channels to the upside. And because uh, those that's when these longer trends do form. So we've looked at this uh, more detail on the M3 active trader class, obviously. So, you know, the downtrend from the market peak broke technically down in here, came back down and bounced hard off of it. So we are in a new uptrend. Question is, is it a bear market rally and we're going lower? Uh, but that's that's the most important thing. We'll get early clues here uh, from our indicators, certainly. And so if you guys do have any questions, pull up the chat here. I've got monitors all over the computer and the desk here. So if you see me looking around, that's what I'm looking at. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Rick. Uh, let's see. So we expect Bitcoin to go to all time higher than the all time high. We do. Yeah, we'll look at some of those price projections in the M3 class tomorrow. Uh, a lot of it you guys have seen my three levels where I think we'll go in the next bull run. Uh, this class is really focused more on the news and what's moving and the indicators. So happy to pull up a, uh, I think, I know you have a coin you wanted to look at, Rick, so we can look at that here with the uh, indicators and sort of get the read for it. But I want to give a macro overall picture. I'm not going to lie, you guys, this is, it's a bit troubling because we saw here, if we look back in time, that uh, Bitcoin tried to get above its 21 and 50 day and sorry, weekly EMAs and failed and, um, and then dropped hard again. So we are at a critical place right here this 21 week moving average is curling and going over so what's my read on this i think we do head lower just based on our trend strength indicator is dropping and uh so i think we come down into this lower channel but um it's either going to hold on the new upper trend channel this is going to be an important trend line to hold as well so I've been saying that we would come back to this 25.5 level, which we did hold at. Again, support and resistance. It was a heavy resistance level back in here, all through here. So we really need this to hold and bounce. Now, if we start breaking up in and above 29.5, and we've got our ERI and TSI strongly green bouncing, that's the bullish scenario. So I want to see what the charts show us. First, and then we'll look at some news because uh, obviously, you know, these things are priced in near instantaneously. A lot of it is algorithm and computer backed, right? So on a daily basis, we can see how this thing's playing out and still coming down on a daily basis. So I think we see another week or two of downside. Uh, the FOMC will, of course, you'll have a knee jerk reaction if anything surprises. But let's let's jump back to the news here and uh, just skimming here on this is. Uh, one new source here. We've got top trending Bitcoin price rejects CPI boost as Fed market scan means. Uh, again, that's a bit of a wordy headline. Let's keep going. Ripple. Yeah. So the Ripple news we want to look at and they released some new findings today. The Hillman docs, uh, the markets haven't reacted very much on that price spiked up a bit on Ripple, but it immediately sold off. And let's see. Ladies, uh, not a whole lot here. Our markets think a Fed pause on rakes as a sure thing. We'll look at this. Uh, okay, got it. Chattanooga. Quantum network, stable coins, total crypto market cap. Let's take a look at that. All right. And then also we can just jump over to Bitcoin news on the Google. So let's see. Bitcoin, we covered that. Yeah, there's not a lot of news today. Uh, let's do this, though. I want to jump over and see crypto panic is a good aggregator so normally i don't want to go down the rabbit hole too far but let's just see if we can uncover something else meaningful here uh let's see ks uh, sharing something as well okay i'll open that all right good we've got some good stuff to uh dig into let's see now that already is open nfts liquid staking uh, there's that's there's not a lot of the news real really today. Here's this SEC emails reveal. We do want to look at that. Okay, I think we have enough. Now, why don't we start with the SEC because people have been watching and waiting for this for quite a while. The uh, emails, the Hinman emails, uh, was um, 
Let's see. I haven't read these yet, so let's just unpack this a bit. I know that it's kind of a nothing burger. The charts didn't move. So the um, SEC stated Hinman's views on Ether being a security were not those of the SEC, while emails show the contrary. Okay, what does that mean? Key takeaways. After giving the green lights to use Ben Hinman's, uh, sorry, Bill Hinman's speech in court, Ripple revealed SEC emails surrounding him in speech that, um, I, I mean, it's not really anything uh, groundbreaking, which we saw in the the price action. They, we were expecting a lot of fanfare and potentially a big rally that could have carried over into the broader market. I did not. Uh, because obviously that all eyes are on XRP. If they can win the lawsuit against the SEC, then uh, that would be great for XRP's price and the overall markets. Bitcoin, of course, SEC has already said that it is not a security. Uh, Ether is a bit in the question marks right now because it said Ether wasn't either. <laughs> Say that three times fast. And uh, But since they switched from proof of uh, proof of work to proof of stake, that might throw that into question. So that's kind of my big worry about uh, Ethereum. And the SEC, uh, you know, certainly uh, hedging their bets, not wanting a market rally to come out of this and see, uh, have the, uh, the signal be that SEC lost. I think that's why they sued Coinbase and the coin, uh, sorry, and Binance in the same week earlier this week. Uh, and so, um, yeah, so let's see him and Doc's Internal debates, SEC speech, kind of kind of fundraising accompanied. Let's get to the point here. Uh, vague was about Ether's status. If the aim was to make a firm statement that Ether's not a security, which he did. So, but again, we have to read into this. The Hinman docs uh, would have been pre-migration to proof of stake, I believe. So that may just throw that all into out the window. Let's see less detail. That was I was back in um, 2018. So you know, um, there's not a whole lot to unpack here, you guys. I think uh, if there were, it would have made more headlines. Let's keep moving. Um, I'll get to this chaos. This is certainly uh, worth noting. Yeah, the Bitcoin having a timeline, and uh, we shared something in the active trader class with that and so you know we we're likely to have more than likely we have a lot of sideways chop this year but i still have that case where we could see a, a hyper increase in prices and um i i don't know i'm hopeful for that um i i don't have a spidey sense on this one we really could go either way and we need to watch the signals and see so uh, that's what we were looking at in the charts um Let's see, Hipperop Labs has come out new as against the SEC with new filings. It's getting old. We just have to get toward a solution. And uh, but this is why lawsuits in the end, nobody wins. They go back and forth, waste a lot of time and money. And uh this thing could battle out for years. I mean, so that's um, you know, this is kind of what people were hoping, hoping for, hoping uh, Ripple Labs positioning for a win. The merits of the arguments from both Ripple and SEC have been examined by experts and many are projecting a win for XRP. OK, but when and what happens then? So let's say, you know, would the SEC appeal that ruling? I don't know. Um, or would they shift their angst and avarice uh, toward Binance and Coinbase? And here, so I guess I might reading uh, either my peripheral pick this up, but here, as I was talking about Binance Coinbase too. So remains unclear how these new filings will impact the much expected summary judgment for uh, from the judge and uh, handling the case. But the expectations were uniform, especially with market regulator bringing additional lawsuits against to Binance and Coinbase, right? Why would they do that right now? They don't want to have a big market rally based on ripple potentially winning i think what happens in the in the end they'll negotiate some kind of a settlement where both sides win or both sides can claim victory and uh but maybe a slap on the wrist with ripple we just have to see how that sorts out and nobody knows so i guess that's all we can unpack from that xrp paints divergence well we saw my alerts went off this morning on xrp so let's just take a look at that. And it promptly pulled back. I was uh, I was excited to see this thing alert triggered right here. I, it's the wrong one. Um, similar chart broke 
29 billion market cap briefly. Let's look at the chart. So that 55 cents. So I had had my alert set here. It, it tweaked, uh, it pushed higher and broke 55 cents, came back down sharply, just barely touched it. So a little bit of a pump, sell the news type of event, right? So, but I would certainly argue that this level is a, a key level here to break above. So I'm going to put my alert here just above this and reality might put two of them. Actually, it looks like I already have one on there. I'm not a big trader of Ripple. I think though that a Ripple Labs rally could spill over into the altcoins and um, and certainly with Bitcoin. But this level is so important here because of this uh, resistance zone back here. And we saw a kind of liquidity pocket all the way back in this range. So we want to see, you know, as an early indication, we can get back above this 57 cents. And then I've got an alert at 60 cents, which would be above the high right in here. If these, if I wake up or I get alerts, these are both taken out. Uh, we'd want to see it pull back and hold above 57. And then, you know, then uh, could be in a new rally zone. And is it possible that uh, Ripple leads? Uh, the overall market rally is possible. I don't. I think it's either going to be ETH or Bitcoin, more likely Bitcoin. And uh, kind of have a new upper trending channel there. So that's interesting. So we'll keep an eye on that. So, all right, back to the, the news. Let's get through all of this. Let's see, where were we? Ripple covered that. And altcoin rally. I know altcoins, I think there's a lot of fear in the altcoins because of the SEC, of course, and this Ripple case is going to mean a lot. But, um, uh, you know, if crypto is not going away, we know that uh, the U.S. is trying to pushing things offshore. But um, you can still buy coins on the DEXs, the decentralized exchanges, uh, Uniswap. There's a number of them out there. And uh, we can look at that a little bit, but, um, you know, again, to start dabbling, just think about that. And when we get into the charts, maybe we should use Ripple as an example, because um, no, not the best example. I wanted to get back to the examples of how, what's looking best for a long-term bounce. And let me just uh, take a look at one of these. It's not in the news and in the crosshairs right now, but um Let's see. Well, it's an old high flyer. Let's use Solana. You know, Solana has been beaten down. It's down to 15. It's in red on the radar. But if it can get back to its old all-time all -time high, this is a bear market range we're in. So the back to the all-time high from these current levels on a percentage basis, that's a 16x. And, um, you know, that beats a sharp stick in the eye. So we want to watch for that. We got into it in July. Sorry, it was my pick and Moonstream in August uh, of 2021. So I have said it'll pull back to 35. We caught it here at 35, ran it all the way here. Nice run on that. Um, this is a good project. I, I don't think it goes away. So starting to accumulate, where would you like to buy Solana? It's, it's, you know, I can't tell you that, but here's where I would be watching for it. Nice little support zone in here at this $15 level. That would be an area to potentially dollar cost average. And then also this $9 level. If it comes down to retest this, uh, you know, looking back. So fast forwarding two years and looking back, where do you think Solana could be? You know, uh, it will survive internationally. I don't think Solana goes Solana goes away. It's a good blockchain. We're still early, everybody. So these are the ones I would suggest start looking for the ones with the highest percentage back to their all-time high. Certainly always recommend taking profits along the way at key sort of resistance levels here. Should have some trouble here on 45, maybe another pullback, DCA in more of that. You know, there are other examples, but you know, these key resistance levels that are obvious. They're around $144 and then uh, about $260, right? So above that price discovery zone, I would always hold a moon bag. And uh, typically these new highs will break out and retest. So if you see a breakthrough in the new high in the bull run next year, maybe sell half your position and then buy it back when it comes back to retest the old high as support. It's typically what we see, uh, see in these things, you know, as we know. So break above resistance, retest, break above. So, you know, this is what we usually see in the markets. You know, there you go. I might leave that on there and see where uh, these uh, squiggly lines have been almost prophetic here. 
and you let the subconscious take over. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's keep going. What does Markets Insider say? Uh, let's see. We did cover covered XRP. Let's see. Markets think Fed pause on rate hikes is a super uh, sorry is a sure thing. Yeah, the CPI is essentially assured no rate hike hikes in June. It's the language and comments at, that will likely spook or reassure the markets. Let's see. Uh, pause. Okay, well, that's interesting. Markets think that the, the odd odds the Fed hits pause on. I'm sorry, I reread that. I, I misread that. Thought that said future rate hikes. I think. Let's see. Uh, consumer. I think we'll probably we could get we could very likely get a. I won't say probably very likely get a raise in July. But here's the thing. I just have a feeling we're going to rally in July. And what would cause that rally is if we didn't raise in July and people were expecting that, right? So let's see the Fed funds rate hike tool that uh, hold off on another rate hike at the conclusion of policy meeting Wednesday this week. So that's where we, we've already covered that. Let's look at July though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, let's jump over here. And uh, we've got January 2024, July. Let's look at the percentage. And so July, what it's factoring is, ah, so July has a 63.8% uh, probability that they raise rates, okay? Whereas for June, let me pull that back here this month, rate hike uh, or the meeting tomorrow, 97.6. Yeah, so it's a virtually assured no rate hike tomorrow. But again, and keeping the basis points, you know, in this uh, current range. But um, for uh, for July, did you guys catch that? And this is just the Fed rate, uh, Fed Watch tool, the CME group. Put that in the chat so you guys can see that here. Probably good to bookmark that too. So um, I'm not sure if you can see all my bookmarks here. I'm just going to go uh, trading resources uh where was all this here trading 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 click sales trading there news and events market resources save okay bookmark that one uh 63.8 64 call a percent rate hike probability next month okay but but what if they don't that could send the markets higher and fast so a lot can happen between now and then uh let's see stock market rally faces a conundrum as inflation can't fall enough to please the Fed while the economy is this strong. Yeah, uh, and so uh, let's see. This is some new news. Russia spiraling toward historic default as the payment looms. Um, okay, but I wonder what, let's let's skim that real quick, see what the end result of that could be. And uh, faces revolution. We don't want to get too far into the international political, but Putin's retaliation against sanctions backfired. It could cost Russia $150 billion this year. So what if Russia sort of has a, a revolution and, and Putin gets ousted? The war is over. Markets will, will certainly rally on that news, uh, at least until China goes into Taiwan. We are in um, dangerous times here right now. Uh, desperate times cause for desperate measures. So we'll see what happens. What do you guys think? Uh, do you guys think we go in? And, I mean, the battle for the semiconductors, uh, this is why... You know, Taiwan is important, but that's why also the historic CHIPS Act, we're bringing all of that back over here because we can't we can't justify or we can't risk having all of our U.S. based semiconductors for government and sensitive data, military and Pentagon. And we can't risk having that made in Taiwan if China can just go zoom in and take all of it. I'm sure there are more elements of that that uh, I'm not aware of, by the way. I'm not claiming to be an expert on that, but uh, certainly uh, we've had some fun trading the uh, semiconductor uh, uh, ETFs, the Direxion ETFs there, uh, the SOXL and SOXS in our vertical returns classes. So uh, Russia's days away from historic debt default, $100 million payment comes due with Moscow caught off them. Yeah, I don't know. I would uh, the 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 Moscow hackers are probably dusting off their uh, hacking machines to go uh, see where they can steal 100 billion in Bitcoin. Um yeah, or they can just go invade North Korea and grab all of theirs. Uh just kidding about that. That would be interesting, but so okay, revolution and collapse. I don't know. Insider business insider fairly reputable. Always always weigh the headlines and news with where you're reading it. 
Russia faces revelation collapse within 10 years, so not immediately. After sanctions undermine its economy, many experts in a think tank. All right, well, well look at there. China will invade Taiwan. I, I think I'm psychic today, you guys. China will invade Taiwan within 10 years, most expert forecast in the Atlantic Council survey. Uh, this doesn't seem to be clickable, but uh, there you have it. All right, interesting times. So uh, real quick, retaliation backfired. Now it's up to 150 billion. Worth, uh, well, here's what our, our takeaways are. And the reason we go through this is not to base our trades off of news, which is in the past. It's to create a narrative in our mind of what could happen. And I'm making the case both for the bearish side and the bullish side. Markets tend to do what will confuse and confound and liquidate as many traders as possible. Is that right? We know this. So I'm always asking myself, what's the apparent scenario that most people are probably anticipating? And then what's the curveball? And how do we read the tea leaves to get in front of it? So I think, uh, you know, certainly as we get closer to a further drop down and the shorts start piling up, the market makers will want to liquidate those shorts and see a bit of a pump. And then everyone's flips long and then they'll try to liquidate the longs. And then the true range and direction will appear. And we don't know which happens first, but what could cause a huge rally in the markets? Uh, so we have some comments here, but Russia pulling out of the war. I don't know. He's so committed though, isn't he? Let's see. KS says in terms of lawsuits, a significant, let me just pull up. Let me get through this article here. Uh, sure thing. All right. We've already talked about that. Let's get through the news. I'll come over to uh, to that comment, uh, KS, but thank you for that. Um, actually, this is a good time. So here's the chat. I don't know if you guys can see this. It's in your uh, chat, but I'll make that full screen so you guys can see it. Uh, do I think BNB is a good play? I don't. I don't have an opinion. We'll look at that on our indicators, uh, Jay. So KS's comments in terms of uh, lawsuits, a significant unspoken elephant in the room is the size of Coinbase's war chest and its ability to absorb lawsuit regulatory pain in the near term versus the size of the SEC's annual budget. Fair point. Yeah. You know, um, public company, uh, lots of um, dollars there. See, and its ability to pay top tier on staff lawyers to prosecute its cases. You know, maybe they drag it out, either Gensler and the SEC uh drags it out i think coinbase would be within the it would be a smart strategy to drag it out till the next administration you know we did have news that the republicans are uh proposing uh to get rid of gensler and the sec it likely won't pass but in the next administration um if enough of us rally around and vote with if you're in the united states with crypto friendly uh politicians and uh, we get someone more friendly. You know, gradually that's going to start to happen. You know, Victor Hugo said, "There's you cannot stop an idea whose time has come. And so this is happening. It's just going to be a bit ugly and bumpy. And, uh, but I, there's, there's, it's an idea whose time has come. And I don't think there's a way to stop it. Now, of course, there's always an outlier, but let's keep going with that. And so if they, keep a lawsuit going which any a good attorney can do for a period of time and certainly until next year maybe we get a more friendly sec a more friendly sec chairman uh that could flip all this on its head so mark my words i think that's probably where this is going so uh in the near term fair comment yeah in the annual budget so maybe they bleed out the annual budget and Coinbase becomes the the new Michael Saylor as the evangelist of this uh, nascent uh, industry. Evidently, under a current political setting, SEC appears to be supremely confident. Yeah, exactly. Current political setting. Keywords. Exactly. SEC does not necessarily have to win the suits, but drag them out long enough. Okay, I guess I maybe I'm reading that in my peripheral, but I didn't know that I was long enough to make them expensive enough to make Coinbase other targeted entities rethink whether it's worthwhile. So you're saying the opposite, KS, that they drag it out so long that it, the Coinbase coffers suffer and they uh, start to rethink doing that versus going offshore. Uh, current regulatory regime, U.S. call it a day or pick up their toys and go elsewhere. Yeah, great comments. Until there's clear regulatory guidance, I would... Um, 
I would uh, add positive regulatory guidance and because they could certainly clarify it and just ban it. But uh, we need positive and proactive um, regulatory guidance on the books, past laws, regulations, exactly. You know, as Coinbase, they, they released, they had met with the SEC over 30 times asking for clarity on how to get registered, and they were met with dead silence. And that's because the SEC likes to regulate and force through regulations, even though the rules are never clear. Aye, aye, aye. This will likely continue since it directly impacts institutional investment or lack thereof in the crypto space. Correct. Um, and before we move on to retail, the thing is, that that mass adoption there are massive hedge funds and huge international funds that can still play in in the crypto and they can do that through new uh I'll, I'll talk about sdps and you know certainly some at etfs there's ways they can still put a lot of money in crypto and uh and so without dealing with coinbases in these exchanges so there's still that 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 um uh caveat it's not really an elephant in the room it's just sort of not fully understood by many and uh so i think your markets will rally again when we start seeing retail mass adoption so i am building a software platform software company that will help business owners and web3 creators start using the latest in blockchain and things like that to really help uh move that adoption and so anyway um but uh, as far as retail alone is not going to be enough to fuel rapid market cap growth. Exactly. Uh, especially because retail has been burned so badly. You know, what is also interesting is we recently did a survey of, um, I can't pull it up here easily, but uh, we did a survey of all of our subscribers at Moonstream. The demographic, the 25 to 34 demographic has almost completely disappeared uh, in terms of survey responses and the 45 to 54, let's see, 25 to 34, I'm sorry, and then the 35 to 44 range. So essentially the 25 to 44 year olds has shrunken dramatically. And I just can only surmise that's because the, the much bigger drop in disposable and investable risk uh, assets, you know, and uh, a lot of that was probably over investing. Younger investors probably got hurt, went heavy uh, in these crypto markets and bought into uh, all the hype, essentially. So that's uh, unfortunate, but, um, you know, the deeper pockets uh, will continue to invest, but retail is not going to be able to do it alone. Uh, trade five and spurs flight to crypto precious metals time will tell yep russia had a default 1996 and no revolution right but putin i mean i don't know i'm hearing the, the oligarchs aren't happy yeah if you lose your if you get your 150 million dollar yacht seized and you're a russian oligarch uh you're not not happy with that uh so we'll see they're friendly candidates on both sides of the political aisles so uh, that's good to know sam who are um I know Cynthia Loomis uh, is. She's great. Sorry, the Bitcoin 2023 conference. She's pro Bitcoin. Uh, they are using oil. They are actually mining for oil, drilling for oil. I'm not sure if it's fracking. It might be. And taking the methane that would otherwise go into the atmosphere and they're channeling it into burning it for powering their Bitcoin miners. This is genius. So it's now carbon neutral and using it to supplement the energy grid beautiful model it takes that whole argument away that bitcoin is environmentally unfriendly keep that in mind so uh that's and then robert f kennedy very pro bitcoin and uh, it's a shame you know he's um uh it's kind of difficult to understand him he's got something going on hopefully he can correct that but uh if he gets into office that's going to be huge uh, robert f kennedy i know that um uh, international people can't necessarily vote for them but we when we were at the bitcoin conference with max wright and one of the other contributors to the channel along with me we uh, his name is Juan. Uh, we had an interview and he said uh, i love that robert kennedy is pro bitcoin i can support his campaign even as a non-us citizen uh, i think you mentioned that uh he's supporting him in bitcoin so internationally other countries could support robert f kennedy by sending bitcoin and crypto interesting so, uh, but I'm not aware of the uh, Democratic side. So um, uh, let me know, because Robert F. Kennedy, well, actually, he's a Democrat, isn't he? 
Uh, you guys correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe that's who you mean. Uh, KS says, and then we'll, we'll dive into some charts here. We've got a lo little bit long in the news. Well, these articles do not tell us who actually owns a lion's share of Russian sovereign death. That, um, that's a good, good point. Uh, that is a good point. Maybe you could dig into that a little bit. Uh, and uh, if China owns a ton of ours, hmm, who owns uh, Russia's debt? Uh, so we also don't know how much Bitcoin they have. Uh, which, um, you know, China, Russia, and the U.S. are the largest holders, as I understand it, for, as nation states, and, and mostly through seizing Bitcoin and North Korea, of course, financing a lot of their nuclear program with crypto and Bitcoin they've stolen. Nice guys there, uh, Kim Jong-un. If they can arrange settlement outside the markets and push it out of due sanctions, articles may end up nothing burger. And... Uh, I'm all over the place, but what if Russia starts only accepting Bitcoin for their oil and gas? I don't know, especially developments, intra-BRICS, mutual sentiments outside. We're getting a little deep in the rabbit hole for this class, I'd say. But um, yeah, great uh, great points to consider, guys. Okay, thanks. And that sort of leads into uh, Bitcoin, Ether, stablecoins total 80% of the trillion dollar market cap. Now that market cap is in danger. We need to see it hold a trillion or we could drop significantly, um, not into deep crashing, but but retracing. And we really want to see it hold that trillion dollar line. Maybe we'll pull that up. But uh, the market cap, it's mostly being held as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and uh, stablecoins, probably Tether uh, for the majority of that. I'm not going to look at that chart. So it makes my head hurt. I think we've talked about what uh, what to watch out for. But money is leaving altcoins for these reasons and into ETH and Bitcoin and stablecoin uh, because of the uh, enforcements that SEC is until things sort out. Okay, and interesting. We have a, uh, pardon me, guys, spam caller. Hey, don't you love those guys? Bitcoin ordinals is bridge Ethereum NFTs. That's interesting that ordinals will now be able to bridge Ethereum NFTs. This will lead to mass adoption. And so that is worth watching there. Uh, and so that's cool. All right, let's see. I think that about covers the news here. Um, Yahoo Finance buying transfer Rockstar shares keys to Bitcoin adoption, BTC Prague. And covered that. Uh, okay, this is something else that you guys shared. Binance Academy, the halving countdown. So 307 days to the halving. We're getting pretty close to when things start going vertical as history would have us, uh, or if history is any indication. And I'm assuming you guys know about the halving. Basically, the halving means that they can. it's harder to mine Bitcoin and makes the scarcity go up. And more scarcity equals more demand equals higher prices. So uh, that's the gist of that. You could Google more about that. The image, however, let me just pull that up since you mentioned it. It's a good visual. And I have to jump over into our M3 uh, trader chat here to find that for you guys. So bear with me. But if you'll just keep this one image in mind, I know some of you said you're going to keep it as your screensaver. because. Just to keep things in perspective, a lot of chatter in the M3 chat. Let me see if you guys can sort of uh, see that again if you're not. So if you'd like more in-depth trading commentary like this, you might want to join our M3 Active Trader class. It's an uh, interactive chat room. My computer's bogging down here, so I didn't mean to share these comments for this long. I was going to skim through it, um, but uh, you can see we're pretty active in this area. I've got too many things open here, you guys. I'm going to have to uh, tell you what. If any of you could pull that chart I posted the other day with the halvings and where markets go vertical, that's too much Too much going on on the machine here. And uh, hang on a second. I'm going to optimize my memory. Well, hopefully it's not going black for you guys. Let's jump into some charts. How about that? Show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. We've covered the news. We can see it here in the charts. And uh, let's take a look at Bitcoin. So we talked about this. Let's jump over to a monthly basis here, by the way. And we can uh, look at this. Let's see. The monthly is still okay. We have, we are printing a bearish early reversal indicator as of, as of now. Hang on, you guys. And um, that's this line right here. Let me clean that up. We we want to pay attention to this. 
because as we've been looking at in the uh, M3 class, you know, the, the market bottom, I believe, is in. I need a, a different Bitcoin chart that goes back farther here. So let me find one of these older ones. So a Bitcoin bitstamp should have gone, should go far enough back. Uh, that's a little concerning, you guys. But on the bullish side, the only time we've seen ERI and TSI trigger in the past were at the previous market cycle lows. So one and two. So we have been getting a bullish signal bullish eri tsi and signal line here but if if we can't reverse this here and now we've got two weeks for that to happen this is bearish for sure and um but it doesn't print it doesn't stay there until the end of the month so we've got two weeks left today's the 13th if we start pushing higher here this will go away so we have to keep an eye on that all right, so we'll have to keep an eye on that for uh, Bitcoin. And we've already covered the news sometimes. Social allegations, excited to write the reversal. Okay, so a little bit more news. Hoskinson refutes SEC allegations. XRP can be excited. Uh, dominance, Bitcoin dominance. So let's look at Bitcoin dominance when we get back to the daily. And uh, any chats? You guys want any more questions? I want to make sure we cover all that. I don't see any new ones. And uh, there we go. So with that on the monthly time frame, currently bearish, I think we could hold here. What's significant is we have the 50 month EMA holding. And I like to look at this, these on a weekly basis, which we just did. So that's it for Bitcoin. Let me jump back down to the uh, the daily here and look at some Bitcoin dominance and just see, because if it's at 50%, that's also a key resistance area. Yeah, and so here's the thing. This would indicate Bitcoin dominance likely to flatline and even come down. The question is, if Bitcoin dominance is dropping, where does money go? Any, uh, I guess, and, and we don't know, but uh, these levels, yeah, this 49% level, this is this is not leading. This is more of reflective, but it's, so it's, it's holding above that 49% level here which is significant. So that's interesting. And it certainly can go much higher. And we saw that, in, uh, you know, in 2020, when typically in bear markets, people are holding more Bitcoin. So Bitcoin could be, this is a clue Bitcoin could be getting ready to run higher. All right. So this is a daily basis. We've had a few days of closes above that, but it's topping out. So we'll want to keep an eye on that. Bitcoin dominance, can it hold? Let's look at ETH dominance here. And uh, then we can look at some movers to see if there's any opportunities for us here for longer short trades. And uh, ETH dominance has been in, let me jump to the five day. It's been in this really interesting. Uh, let's see, weekly basis. Zoom out a bit more. Yeah. So it's been in the sideways trading range here. and. Um, but still edging higher. So this is encouraging. So I have alerts at 21 and at uh, 22%. What could cause Ethereum to break out? Any number of things, but um, you know, another surge in gas fees with another meme driven mania, but uh, too early to tell. Let's take a look at USDT dominance here. Consistently going up, though, uh, USDT dominance consistently rising. And uh, it's worth noting. So, you know, money could certainly flow back in there and as a leading stable coin. All right, guys, let's do this. Let's jump over to a, um, let me see if I missed anything. Uh, we can pull up our paper trader, by the way. We had a couple of trades on. And let's see how those are doing making me reconnect this here trade station paper trading there i don't know why this doesn't stay connected uh but positions are in and we did very well on this uh at ajix short let's take a look at ajix we started seeing that rolling over and uh we had adam adam slightly higher let's just do that one 
and see adam looks kind of bull oh this is the short the 3x short so i think that's worth holding there looks like it's running up the ajax short here uh also did well pumped up from these lower levels it's back above the 50-day moving average i don't know i think we should take profits on that plus plus six hundred dollars that's uh on a percentage basis i have that turned off but uh let's go ahead and short and close that Close position. I'll just do a market position here. You could do a partial close, but I mean, um, in all fairness, actually, the way to do that would be I would do 50% of that or 500, take some profits off the table, take the initial money out of the position, hold some. Okay. And then we have KuCoin uh, near USTT short, 3X short near coming down. So, you know, never, it's a bit, a bit high above its 21 day moving average. I would expect that to come in. So let's close half of that position. And again, this is uh, educational purposes only, not telling you what to trade, no financial advice. Uh, we do a little more of that in the active trader class as a group, but uh, that's because I know where you guys are. Let's see, in terms of your abilities and C pool, let's see, C pool, uh, not uh, looking great. I think that's nothing. I'm going to exit that down just a little bit, and but all red on the radar. So that would be. A good one to uh, exit out of. So I'm going to do that here. Not sure why I put it always. I don't need to see this. So what else are we in open position? So we've still got near and Ajax and Adam. I think I'll hold those. We've got stop losses on um, some of these other ones here on the Ajax. And then uh, this Solana buy limit order. How many of that? Let's see. I don't want to have a buy order in. Let me just see what that or that's at. It doesn't say 10. Bill price price working. Uh, I think this is a, this is a Solana short, okay. But it didn't fill. So buy a buy market order that didn't fill. This trading paper trading is uh, a bit wonky, so we'll just get rid of it for clarity. Alrighty. Um. So let's. Uh, what do we want to look at? And I know you guys wanted to look at some things, so uh, so I can do that now. We. Uh, Rick, which is the one you wanted to look at? I know you had one and uh, somebody said BNB. So I can look for that one too, Rick, by the way, in a second. So BNB, let's look at the chart here. Okay, I'll zoom out a bit. Well, BNB seems oversold. Could it go a little lower? I'd like it more down in this liquidity zone here. But um, it is it is retesting the support zone. I, I think BNB would be fair for a bounce. It's a bit extended away from that 21 day moving at EMA. These tend to revert. So we'll see some kind of a bounce. And we've got support here and here and here. I think a BNB is, is a good lottery ticket. I would keep, um, you know, this is an accumulation zone. We'll turn that to green. But, uh, you know, you may it may turn into a long term investment if that thing doesn't turn around for you quickly uh or if it continues going lower sorry i guess i was trying to speak and, and type at the same time but um it, it doesn't look incredibly bullish this would be a long-term hold you know i'm not a big fan of buying these strong dips unless it's a really strong level but i'd say it is this is a pretty solid um support zone yeah, I, I think that would be. I was surprised. I'm surprised to see BNB is. So this is a good liquidity zone. You could you could start dollar cost averaging into that certainly. And uh, yeah, all right, Rick, gotcha. So let's take a look here. Here's a audience request, Lena, crypto market cap. Where is it? It's on Binance. Binance a little tricky to. I'm not sure I'd be doing anything on Binance right now. Uh, let's look at it in KuCoin, and they have the, uh, the two to four longs and shorts. So let's take a look at the underlying. So linear, not familiar with this. It's in a nice upward trending channel. Okay, so that's that's bullish. Let me zoom out a bit, right? Because what did we have here? We had a previous downward trending channel. This hasn't been around that long. That that is now in a new upward trending channel. We've got a twenty one week. EMA starting to turn higher. It does look nice. I like the chart on a weekly basis. Let's check our indicators. 
uh, a bit overbought. We did have an ERI down in here. Let me just move all the scales over on to one side. Okay. I don't know what they do, so I can't make a recommendation, but I do like the chart. Bullish uh, ERI here. The TSI went green. It's a bit overbought here on the weekly basis, so that concerns me a little bit. And the overall market's heading lower. I, I'm not a buyer of you know things, although the TSI on a daily looks very good. Let's see. Okay, so Rick, I think you're on to something here. This is a nice looking chart and um, looks bullish on the daily chart, not so much on the weekly monthly. So I would say it's it's safe, relatively safe for a, a swing trade here on bouncing off the 21 and the 50 day moving average. It's pulled back to the 21 day. So I like pullbacks, but the ERI and TSI are green. The signal's trying to get green. So this is a case where you would might dollar cost average in. And um, again, if you guys have the uh, cheat sheets for this, I thought I had saved that here and bear with me because I want you guys to follow along with these. And so the uh, cheat sheets for the uh, Crypto Mastery, the success checklists, right? So where is this? Crypto Resources, trade checklist, almost there. One more click. There it is. This is where you can get the trader success checklist. All right. I thought I had it uh, pulled up here. I'll put that in the chat. And um, yeah, let's download it. All you, have to, you can give your name and email and download that for free since I don't have it queued up here. But I'm coming back to this here and I don't necessarily want my email all over the place. Although I've got a pretty good um, spam filter on there. For uh, anyway, download the checklist so you can get that for free. And that's that, uh, that might be a shorter link, but I put it in the chat for you guys. All right, here's what's important. So, why would you take uh, potentially that trade? So, we have a couple of things. That's not it. Where's Lena? So, we have the ERI green, TSI green end crossing above 20. So, those are two signals. Okay. Hmm. Thought I had downloaded that. Download. All righty. So we have that here. Oh, sorry, guys. A little temperamental. Once you have it downloaded, that you can, you can do it. It's interactive. See that? Pretty cool. So any score over three out of nineteen is bullish and worth considering for a buy. Is a TSI so green and above the twenty line? Again, we just confirmed that. We have ERI. Yes. Green and above the 20 line. So that's the TSI, our trend strength indicator. This is not green yet. This is not green yet. But we do have something else in play. And that is a holding above the 21 and 50 day moving average. So these are a no. Is This is a no. And then bullish golfing no is candle body at support, such as an EMA or a trend line. Yes. Support on the 21 and above the 50-day EMA. And we're kind of in this, this upward trending channel. That might be another one to add to that checklist. But we've got three of them. And here's well, here's a similar one. Is the price above 21 and 50? Um, these are similar. So, but I think, you know, and this, um, you know, we could pull up our volatility index, take a look at that for another confirmation. But I think it's, it's, it's an interesting trade there. So. Ah, very good. So this is looking pretty good, Rick. So the volatility index, that's a good example to play around with, is as another one of our favorites because it shows, especially when it's coming out of that oversold zone in that red zone, coming back above the 20 line on a daily basis is bullish. Happened back here a couple of days ago and had a nice pump right there. Similarly, back here, not as strong on that but when you get more of these aligning then it's a stronger trade candidate so vol index above the 20 line yes is it breaking above resistance no not really okay so let's not over complement it by the way the vol index will change the colors of these candles so that you don't have to even look at it here's a nuance i don't have to look at the vol index i know that it was overbought here when it was green candle and i know it was oversold down in here when these are red candles 
And uh, I can see now that the line has gone back to black. Okay, so the black line, that's the changes the candle color. So that way you don't have to clutter up your chart too much. Okay, Does that makes sense. Very nice. I'm going to turn off the trend indicator for now because that's not currently uh, bullish here. So if we come back, now we've got a score of five out of 19 for taking that trade. We don't have a rocket. A rocket's a trade setup that we talk about in our Moonstream M3 trader class. It's one of our favorites. And uh, so there you go. I think that that's a good little checklist. I think Lena is one to consider starting to leg into. And um, I would be taking profits up in this range. What's our favorite free indicator for profit taking? Their Bollinger Band modified with a third standard deviation. So, but it corresponds exactly with the upper range of that trading zone. So I would probably like, I'd set my profit, take profits at 26 cents, 27 cents. That's what I would do, you know, for, for half a position. But uh, the upward range of this, you know, you've got that Bollinger Band, it could hit 28 but to be safe right there about 27 cents with the intention of buying it back here. Now, here's another nuance. I wouldn't suggest buying in a full position and selling your full position. You might sell half of your position at the take profit zone up here, either with a bearish ERI or hitting the upper Bollinger Band. But you see where that happened. I love that third standard deviation Bollinger Band because right in here, you might have been taking profits. And in reality, this candle, some of these here, it had a really big push up here. But um, these are all when it gets above that third standard deviation. But uh, it's a good take profits signal. This one's a bit volatile, though. You know, it's it's really going outside that 3BB. You might even use a 4BB on this, which uh, we haven't done on altcoins. We did it on the total market cap. But there, this one... This one, the 4BB is a better indication, I'd say. And you would have taken profits potentially right here, maybe even right here. But our ERI would have been the confirmation signal. Anyway, point being, uh, not a bad entry down in these ranges. 21-day exponential moving average support, ERI, TSI. So if that thing does shoot up to where we just talked about from this level, current levels, that is 118%. Hold the horses. What? These charts can be misleading sometimes. There you go, Rick. That's winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, I like it. <clears throat> uh, so nice base. That's a nice little mini home run right there. Now, so uh, yeah, I, I would. I'm what I'm looking for now are intermediary take profit zones because you don't want to be greedy. What do they say? Yeah, the pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered. Uh, this is one where you would want to probably ease out right in this range here, take some profits here, because if it comes up here and pulls back, right, let's, let's talk about this for a minute, because big mistake that traders make is they hold on too long or they, they sell too fast. And let's say this thing comes up and then it pulls back and you panic sell here where it's more likely to bounce. The way to play this, if you uh, were to write your own script here is uh, take some profits right in this zone. And we'll, I think this is a perfect time to pull put a Fibonacci golden pocket on this too. So in terms of drawing the squiggly line, uh, for lack of a better word, what's this thing likely going to do? Likely come up in this range, pull back to the rising 21 and 50, and then break out and then hit this upper Bollinger Band, right? And then, then this resistance level becomes support and then it pulls back and goes like that. That's more that's most likely what would happen. So if that were going to happen, how would you best play this? And I'm sorry, these, these lines are so squiggly and uh, don't look great, but you get the idea. Um, and I'm going to take the vol index off because it throws people off when the candle colors change. So if you were to take this trade as an example, and you took, say, 50% of your profits, had a sell limit order at 23.5, you know, uh, it, with the intent of if it pulls back, is to go back in and buy some more with the house's money. Similarly, come up here, sell maybe two-thirds of the position at the upper Bollinger Band, for rebuying at the pullback. That's how you can compound your positions and compound your gains. And honestly, what you should do, educational purposes, uh, is take out your initial investment as soon as you can. 
and then trade with the profits. Okay, either you know certainly hold a moon bag with these, and uh, and then trade the the gaps. That's the real power of these indicators. And so, um, by the way. Um, uh, if you're watching on YouTube and there were sort of growing subscribers, if you uh, would like access to these uh, indicators, you can do so at uh, the URL here, which is just cryptomastery.online. Uh, I can't spell today. We're going to change that to online uh, .org. We just bought the .com. Somebody has. We're not going to go buy that just yet. But Chris, cryptomastery.online. Uh, to learn more about these indicators and of course they are part of the m3 trading program that many of you are already in so but you can learn more about these these are the best i've used in 20 years these are the indicators i've been showing you today anyway uh let's move it right along where were we uh back to um lena here okay so what else i was going to show you the fibonacci right so with that let's take a look at the other way to possibly predict where prices might go i'll just clean this up a little bit so we don't have to look at this so for a fibonacci here we can just go down and put on from the top of that candle to the bottom of this candle takes us to that golden pocket right around 22 cents would be a good another pro take profit level and that's that's actually right in the range of what i was saying before so what i would say is uh in this golden pocket there 22 well that's kind of what i was saying 22 cents i eyeballed that pretty good there didn't i 22 cents i was a bit high actually this is where i was you know but you can be taking profits at multiple levels in here if you get up that high but as we've seen these this thing cycles pretty well pretty bullish chart i like the fact that the weekly tsi is also uh well actually i was saying got ahead of myself weekly tsi it has room to go higher what i like is the weekly eri 21 and 50 day ERI are turning higher. Um, so, you know, once we get back into the bull market a bit more, we'll start looking at Ichimoku's and things like that. And let me turn this off. Let me, I'll hide the, uh, that uh, fib retracement for now. And let's do this. Any questions, you guys? We're coming up we're over an hour so we're going to call it uh, in a minute here let's just say ichimoku on my favorites i like the alley ichimoku there so a little easier to read um but so it's interesting here on the daily basis it's um you know this is uh, it's above the cloud it's good it had a bullish crossover in here of the tenken and the kijin line they're kind of running neck and neck well the tenken came right up here it's harder to read on these low volume stocks. So I think the uh, Ichimoku is one more useful on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and bigger coins. All right. So let's do this, you guys. Uh, well, how about this? All right. Let's do this. In the paper trader, let's go in and buy some of this, uh, Lena, here. We'll see how we do. Uh, say trade. I'm going to buy. I'm going to do a create a new order. So I'll do a market order. Let's see. Order price is not appropriate. Right. Market order. Limit orders are better, but for the ease, because I want to get it in there. And, and uh, you know, um, in all fairness, if I put in a limit order, usually it feels it's more realistic from a simulator standpoint uh, to do market order. And um, so we're going to buy market order. How many units? Well, a thousand would be, be $18. So uh, if we did... There's a lot of this. I'm not sure yeah, what the volume is on this. Well, we can look at the linear multiple also. So let's do that next. So if we have a thousand shares or a thousand coins rather at 18 cents, that's $18. If we do 10,000, it's $180. So that's probably more reasonable. And uh, let's hit buy. And uh, there you go. Now, if you go buy something like that, I'm not sure there's that much liquidity on this thing. So uh, anyway, keep that in mind. Let's do this, however. Lena three, I think that said, yeah, there's a a long, leveraged long. These are a little more risky. I don't like this chart as much. Let's not let's not do that. Uh, what we could do though is go back here to Lena, the regular one. 
on the KuCoin, add it to our watch list here in the Crypto Mastery there so we can come back to it. And is this a trend line? No. All right. Well, anything else, you guys? We uh, we could go into the Crypto Pair screener, which always is a bit messy. But, um, well, I tell you what. Instead of doing that, I think the screener is a bit much. Let's go back to... Um, Hmm. What happened to the, uh, shoot, I just closed something by accident. Um, <clears throat> that front, uh, that front page that we were on, I have to pull it back up now. Uh, the coin heat map, where it is, currency heat map. There it is. Not sure how to close that. Sorry about that, guys. So again, uh, not much going on at all. Bitcoin, Ethereum, basically at even. Tether, UST, XRP dropping, selling on the news. If I turn off the uh, the ones that are not moving at all, what do we have? We got uh, AVAX moving 2.0%. Let's see. BNB, we looked at uh, nothing else really looking good. Hex is the Ponzi, so stay away from that. Uh, in my humble opinion, and uh, Filecoin is up. Let's see. Let's take a look at Filecoin and uh, look at a chart here. Let me get rid of that. Huh. Well, all right. Keep an eye on Filecoin, guys. What I'm looking at here is an oversold TSI, and the ERI has potential for a bullish ERI here. Okay. And just to unpack this a bit on our, this is our early reversal indicator, of course. If this green line gets above 20 in tomorrow's trading range, then we'll have a bullish ERI signal there. And uh, this is proprietary, one of our proprietary indicators, but it's been hugely uh, accurate, especially when the trend strength indicator coincides and so part of the way this is built there's a keltner channel built into all this terminology but if it comes from below this three percent level and it was hugging the zero percent level day one yesterday to years today i think we're going to have this keep file coin on your radar i'm going to add it to our crypto mastery watch list and i'm going to set an alert here this thing got oversold really and uh, i think there's but let's zoom out it's been dropping quite a bit i'll turn off this Bollinger Band, although another thing to keep in mind, you guys, <clears throat> just like the uh, Bollinger Band on the high side is a sell. If it breaks the lower Bollinger Band, usually that is a either time to, to cover your short or buy it. It'll have a reflexive bounce. And my good friend Steve Nissen taught me that Bollinger Bands tend to go from one extreme to the other. So down here, it broke the lower Bollinger Band here. Came down and retested and then went all the way up, plugging the upper band until it got up here, broke the band again here and here. And then it's been trending down ever since. And now we've touched the bottom. I think that uh, Filecoin, I, I wish it were a stronger support zone, but I think this is one to keep an eye on if we get that bullish ERI and uh, TSI on that on the daily basis. So how about that? Let's take a look at the weekly. Oversold on the weekly. Weekly ERI it has already triggered there. So uh, I would want to see another one. But uh, in terms of price action, you know, limited upside. It's going to hit resistance at this 21. Looks like the 50 day moving average, that EMA. But at current levels, if it does, it's still a 25% base hit potentially. Okay. Uh, somebody's saying pulse chain. Uh, KSC, I thought that's right. That is, was one of the alts named in the SEC lawsuit as a security. But um, yeah, I mean, the U.S. is not the only game in town. Remember that. But um, it is predominantly where uh, the altcoin markets are traded. And uh, I'm not sure where you would even buy a file coin. It's probably on, uh, uh, on KuCoin. So yeah, for some reason, this tool here, I, I'm sure it, it's when you click on these, it goes to a chart based on crypto.com. So they must have some kind of a deal with crypto.com. But at any rate, 
uh, good to know. Let's look at Avalanche, see what's going on there. AVAX was probably also one of those. I can't remember, though. Can somebody look that up? Was AVAX part of the, the lawsuit? Similar chart here and oversold. Any news? Let's see. Fear of blockchain, Ava Labs, stablecoin. Circle launches euro-based stablecoin on Avalanche. That's some pretty good news. Okay. I mean, <clears throat> guys, again, this is where you might want to say to yourself, looking back in two or three years or five years, this is a huge double bottom. I mean, this thing is down... Ninety-two percent, really, yeah, ninety-three percent from its highs. How much farther could it go? Have a strong, uh, it's a strong accumulation zone in here. I mean, I know the news is bad, but it, it's rallied out of this zone every time here since uh, the July of the bottom, the market bottom, July of twenty twenty-one. I think we, I think we bottom in in July. I thought it might be early. I thought it might see it in June, but I think it's July, kind of like here in 2021. And, um, you know, we have some strong support at these levels. I think we do. Looks, It would look to me, it would make sense to see a bounce here and to start dollar cost averaging into AVAX. It's a good project and, and it's got good news out, as you, you see here. Uh, always use a stop loss, as uh, was noted in the comments above. But um, you know the projects you think will survive, and the next and that the next bull run. Let's just see from here to the top. We just did that, essentially. Well, no, we did it to the downside, but this is a 10x potential. And um, some of you may see this chart again, and I uh, in our new program. That uh, starts this week. So uh, that's interesting. <clears throat> you know, so look, we're just looking for clues. It done a really nice job on this trading view here. And uh, so, you know, we can, I, I like this better than that crypto screener, which is really clumsy. And so, um, Anything else? Uh, let's see. Some people are talking about VeChain. I know somebody want to look at Pulse. Wait, what is this? Huh. Uh, so ICP is one of those that's been beaten down a lot. and um, But I kind of question the longevity of this project. They had a lot of hoopla and a lot of big investors in, on board. But I think the problem here is as with all these altcoins, is there's just so much overhead supply. A lot of people got, they bought into the hype back here and in here and all these pushes higher. The problem with that is every push higher will be met with selling resistance. So I would suggest maybe not to ICP until we start really sort of taking out some of these old rejected areas here. So I would say I'd put an alert here though on ICP around $9 just to kind of put it back on my radar. Not a big fan of the project though. It's, it's uh, I don't know, um, but new information equals new decision. So I'm sorry, just trying to scan through these, you know, other ones that are down too, like at some point XRP might be a good bounce point. And um, sorry, I have the camera on and I'm digging my fingers in my ear. Sorry, I forgot that thing was on. Uh, so let's see who else is in here up 6%. We have, mm, uh, I hesitate. Luna Classics, does it have a pulse? Is it ever going to live again? Uh, it's a lottery ticket. I have some. I have a little bit of it, but I would not, I'm not recommending this, of course. All right, let's do this, you guys. We're kind of running long on time. Somebody said pulse chain, and uh, it's on OKX. It's on Binance. Be careful with Binance. It's also on Uniswap. So I just want to look at the chart here. So what are we going to do? I guess we can use Binance. Uh, well, no, Pulse Chain, different. Okay, I assume this is, well, which one? Um, Pulse Chain. Uh, let's see. Do you have an exchange you'd like to see it on? Uh, OKX. It doesn't appear to be a bit. I thought Pulse Chain was around longer. I haven't followed this, actually, to be honest. 
But uh, is that the right one? Pulse Chain Tether on OKX. It's the only one I really see here. Unless you're doing a wrapped pulse in uh, in uh, Uniswap. All right, let's take a look. Well, I don't know what you want me to say here. It doesn't look good uh, to me. It's oversold, but there's not enough data on this, Pirate J. So uh, if there's a longer term, I mean, I don't see an ERI or a TSI, so it's it's just hard to read our signals, and that's that's a red flag for me. Uh, so. Yeah, you know, Pulse Chain should have been around longer. There's got to be something wrong here. Let me just see. I've heard of that. Pulse Chain. Tether, Spot Crypto. OKX may have just added it. Red Pulse is different. Pulse X. Let's see this one. Uh, all right. Let's see. I don't know, you guys. Uh, I don't, I'm not pulling up anything longer. It doesn't look good. How about that? So, short answer, Jay. <laughs> I wouldn't touch it. So, uh, if you want to send me another chart, we can look at it tomorrow in uh, Moonstream. But um, anyway, everybody, thanks. I think that's all we have time for. Uh, and let's, let's just look at XRP one more time. It seems it's dropping a bit you know there may be a bounce point to look for and you know but it's the tsi tells it all you guys the tsi heading down this thing's coming down lower uh the it's overbought on the weekly the best time to buy xrp is on the lower zones coming up here on the daily and uh weekly on the tsi if there's an eri so again the early reversal indicator the trend uh the trend strength indicator and then the signal line going green and then the key in the bell our four kings those are the best times to buy had you bought and layered into this a position in xrp uh, and we saw it we just i wasn't sure it was under the 21 day moving average ema but we had the eri let me turn that on and i'll make that full screen for you guys so we are in here eri it was a small arrow so it was a little bit questionable but then tsi went green right in here right when the signal it did so i i can uh right in here would have been the best buy zone after getting three of those and this thing came up 26 uh, percent, even as high as 32 percent. but in reality this would have been a nice little 25 percent base hit uh then we had the bearish eri and the tsi going here so these were early signals to get out of this okay so same with that signal line so on xrp i'd be waiting now here's what we see bollinger bands tightening that could pre precipitate uh, either a pull up higher or a drop. Uh, but right now, I wouldn't be doing anything on XRP. Wait for your signals to align. Wait for the four kings, ERI, TSI, signal, and bell. And, uh, you know, these are tradable markets, you guys. If you don't have these indicators yet, you can find them again at cryptomastery.online if you'd like some help and more help and more daily access to me. You can go to Moonstream. Dot io that's moonstream.io slash m3 sorry for the commercials guys but uh hey you know what I'm looking to build a community so there you have it uh quick comment here a broader perspective let me move this down here so not looking at my eyeballs the broader perspective should likely be which of these alts will survive and thrive in the three to five year time frame yeah i mean this is true the broader perspective that is true but i would also say that if they survive the next bull market, likely 2024, there'll be some great pump action to add to your bags, at which point uh, at least taking some profit off the table. Uh, we did nail the top on the last markets. Our indicators nailed them up the top. I was telling people, as you know, to get out then. So I think that's prudent to um, to do and then reevaluate and hold some in a longer term three to five year time frame. Uh, and forget about them. That's usually the best way to do it. But certainly, you know, swing trading tops and bottoms uh, is a good thing to layer onto it. Which crypto sectors will help grow the total market cap? Yeah, and and we're we're looking into that. That's part of our new retire rich inner circle sort of emerging markets. Uh, I won't talk about that. This is um, not a commercial for that, but that is we did reopen it to you guys. Um, 
Uh, we did just reopen that. If you'd like more information, you can email moonstreamvip at gmail.com. Those will be longer term holds, smaller caps for the longer, longer time frame. And by covering these most promising strong players in those three to five time year time frames, I've got a really good uh, thesis for that. And strong real value proposition, solving real problems. So the future Netflix and Amazons of the crypto world, that's what we're going to be uh, focusing on. But uh, I agree with you uh, in in that, especially if you have larger assets, to spread some around, uh, some for active trading, some for hodling, and then some for these emerging markets and uh, you know cycle trading strong development leadership teams yeah also true i also look for who uh investors you know solana big reason i think they're sticking around mandreason horowitz pumped 110 million into them and uh, and helium coin as well these are strong investor backed and projects like ogn which uh, you heard me talk about the team from youtube original engineer and upan of course they one of the original founding team members at youtube they're going to figure it out they'll be, and they are doing some cool things. And uh, even at, at Google, they didn't figure out how to make money initially, right? So see when trades without a stop loss turn into long-term trades, right? Uh, this becomes pretty important. Yes. So your KS's point is a good one. Don't, you know, typically I don't recommend playing around with projects that uh, have a higher likelihood of imploding. And this is a good filter for those projects. If they're likely to survive three to five years, then if you do get into one uh, that goes against you and you suddenly turn into a uh, long-term trader, you know, long-term investor, when, you know, we've all been there, we have a, a swing trade that dips down below our stop loss. And then we, our, our mind, our, uh, our sort of consistency of commitment and our, a what's it called? A commitment bias, a consistency bias. I can't remember the word offhand. Confirmation bias. Our confirmation kicks in, says, you know, well, clearly my ego is never wrong. And so I'm right here. I'll just turn into a long term trade. That is, uh, will have a higher long term success rate if the project is quality in the beginning. So be careful with ICOs and uh, these things that are unproven in trade asset allocation not to be underestimated. So all good comments here from KS. Thank you. Otherwise, we end up in the short term scalping game. Yeah, and scalping our way likely lower. And that's not what we want. So, uh, okay, thanks, guys. Thanks, Private and uh, Crypto Maestro. That's a new one. All right, everybody. Well, hey, I think we made a good dent in it. All eyes are on the crypto or the FOMC meeting tomorrow. You know, 68%, very high. No, it's 98% given that there will be no raise. So uh, don't expect a big bullish pump. If you see, please don't trade the whipsaw. The market makers love to fake people out. Uh, they might say no raise. And then you see a, a pump up higher. The market makers will do that, trying to create liquidity from retail traders kind of diving in. Uh, if we see that, it'll likely reverse and come back down on that. So, you know, I would just uh, sit that one out tomorrow, see where things settle. But we are in uh, this uh, interesting pattern here. And don't don't forget this, this weekly basis uh, as a likely scenario, at least a potential scenario. And so any bounces that we see over the next few weeks, I would fade into them. I would sell into these likely resistance areas because you know um i don't know it you know these trend zones can certainly widen and maybe this is the the bounce point but for now i'm going to keep it there and, and that could that right shoulder you know we just don't know yet but if it starts breaking down out of that trend channel then we're in real danger of a head and shoulders breakdown uh let's just finish that thought though the measure move on that if we break that fortunately it's not too bad. The neckline, well, take that back. The neckline would be there. And so a break below the neckline takes us back potentially to 18,500. Now I have another chart though. We're gonna we have already drawn tomorrow that has us retesting the lows. So either it means I you know drew that differently. Let's see. It depends how you draw the neckline on this. And we don't know where that plays out. We have the right shoulder has to form first. 
So if the neckline is here and it breaks here, that puts us back into this 18,500 range. We do have a CME gap right around 20, which needs to fill, well, not needs to, but uh, if we start breaking this level here, 25.3, I think 20,000 is the next step for that CME gap. We'll look at that tomorrow. And then beyond down below, that's anyone's game. But uh, it's also certainly possible that we hold. And this becomes a new trend upper channel. And we go, you know, so just in terms of the timeline, though, these these are, don't look at the timeline and these strictly to visually see it. I think July I'd love to see us pushing higher in July. Something about July here. I just, you know, it's this is the other scenario that could happen. And we just don't know yet. Anyway, guys, thanks, everybody. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you are watching the uh, YouTube uh, replay, please like, subscribe on these if you like the content. And uh, any comments you'd like to leave, uh, please put those below. And uh, we'll talk to you again next week, everyone. Thanks.